Stocks of the US tech companies went up by $8 trillion in just four months. In just four months, the US tech went up by 40%. Is it a sign of progress and prosperity or it's just madness? Is it the greatest investment opportunity of your lifetime or it's a bubble? The bubble fueled by naive investors and greedy corporations. Let's find out. Hi, my name is Vitaly. I am an economist. I am a boring mainstream economist. And it's time we talk about the AI bubble. Just how crazy is it? Right now, the top 10 companies are worth $22 trillion. Compare that to April, when they were worth $14 trillion. That's $8 trillion pump in just four months. And that is the fastest rally in history. I am old enough to remember the last time it happened. It was in the 1990s during the famous dot-com bubble. Back then, investors pumped the market by $11 trillion. But but that happened over five years. And now it happened in four months. Back then, it took us five years to create a bubble. Now we do it in four months. That's progress. Also, during the dot-com bubble, that rally happened across all industries. Now it's just 10 companies. But don't take my word for it. Don't trust me. Trust the data. I am going to tell you the three most common indicators for the stock market to show you how inflated the AI bubble is. For the US tech industry, the PS ratio, price to sales ratio, is almost 10. The average, 1.6. The PE ratio, price to earnings ratio, is between 40 and 50. The average, 22. The price to free cash flow ratio is above 50. The average 25. I know what you want to say. You want to say, yes, these stocks cost more, but they bring more money, greater dividends. Right? Wrong. Tesla never paid dividends. Meta never paid dividends. And Nvidia, the sweetheart of the US economy is paying tiny, teeny dividends. Three cents on a share. NVIDIA has a market cap of four trillion dollars. Four trillion, that's more than the GDP of Britain. It's almost as much as the GDP of Japan. And yet, NVIDIA is paying the smallest dividends possible. And some companies do pay dividends, Microsoft and Apple, for example, but their dividends is nowhere near the inflation rate. In real dollars, those stocks are losing money. Apple, Microsoft, OpenAI are deep in debt. Apple, for example, has the debt-to-equity ratio of over 150%. They have $78 billion in long-term debt. Microsoft is not much better, over $50 billion in debt. OpenAI is running losses. Sam Altman, the CEO of the company, says he's willing to suffer losses. Of course he is, because the company is going to have losses, whether he's willing or not. Of course this company is running losses, because they offer an expensive product for free. And it's about to get worse, because China's Deep Seek is offering a better product also for free. So where does the investor's optimism come from? Have I told you that I'm a boring economist? And as a mainstream economist, I want to look at the most crucial economic indicator – productivity. I know, it sounds boring, but I am a boring economist. Productivity is the output per worker per hour. It's about efficiency. And the last time productivity was growing was in the 1960s. Then it hit a plateau. In 2010s especially, productivity hasn't changed much. 
no breakthrough, no exponential growth, nothing. Economic growth is slowing down, period. The real economic growth happened in the 60s, when people were inventing physical devices, airplanes, television, telephone, nuclear energy, semiconductors. Economic growth happened thanks to analog devices. And digital devices? Not so much. Analog devices changed everything. And digital devices change only three industries – communication, information, and entertainment. Seventy years ago, progress was when people went to space and landed on the moon. And now, progress is when iPhone users drink digital beer and kiss their dirty screens. But you're smart. You probably want to say, but productivity is still growing. Slowly, but surely. So it's all good, right? But that is exactly my point. The slow growth doesn't justify the fastest rally in history. And small improvements in tech don't justify the $8 trillion pump in the stock market. Right now, some of you are screaming at the screen. No, AI is the way of the future. And I agree, AI is the way of the future. It will change our lives forever, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't mean that you will make money on tech stocks. It doesn't mean that AI companies of today will survive tomorrow. After the dot-com bubble of the 1990s, internet is still here. Internet is alive. But most dot-com companies are dead. In the 1990s, if a company added dot-com to its name, its stock would jump. And it happened seven years ago. If a company added blockchain to its name, its stock would jump. Where are they now? Blockchain technology is still here, but most blockchain companies died out. Internet is still here, but most dot-com companies went away. And the same thing will happen to AI. AI will stay, but most AI companies will go away. But here is the kicker. The entire business model of AI is unsustainable. AI companies produce expensive products, offer them for free, earn zero dollars, and expect to make money? This technology costs so much, but earns so little. There is no loyalty. Customers move easily between platforms. One day you use ChatGPT, next day it's Grok, next week it's DeepSeek. There is nothing that would bind clients to a certain brand. And this industry is changing so fast that the smallest mistake can kill a company. A leader of today can go bankrupt tomorrow. So every tech company must spend billions of dollars not to make money, no, but just to stay afloat. Right now, this industry promises you profits in the future, but guarantees losses for today. To sum up, the industry is growing slowly, but stocks are growing exponentially. And this gap between the exponential growth and the slow growth is a bubble. And this bubble must burst. Big tech must lose half of its value, which will translate into about 17% drop for the entire market. This was my update on the upcoming financial Armageddon. Put your comment below. I wish you a happy stock market crash and I'll talk to you next time.